In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a long list of low glycemic foods that do not spike blood sugar. These foods are blood sugar friendly and favorable for anyone with diabetes and insulin resistance, but also for everyone really, because having stable blood sugar has both short-term and long-term benefits. Short-term benefits include consistent energy throughout the day, less cravings, and clearer thinking. Long-term benefits include prevention of conditions such as insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes, reducing your risk of heart disease, and reducing your risk of other diseases as well. Having a general understanding of the impact that different foods have on our blood sugar will set you up for a long, healthy life. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you over 75 foods that are low on the glycemic index and do not spike blood sugar. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. We're gonna start off today quickly recapping what blood sugar is and why it matters for our health. And then we will get into the list. But if you're a bit impatient and want to skip ahead, I always have timestamps on the progress bar just below. If you hover your mouse over top of that, you can see the different timestamps and you can click ahead to the list. But I really encourage you not to skip ahead because what we're going to be talking about first, just having this basic understanding can make such a difference for your health. What is blood sugar? Blood sugar, also known as blood glucose, is the concentration of sugar that is in your blood. At any point in time, your body requires roughly four grams of sugar to be circulating your bloodstream. However, when we eat certain foods, these foods are broken down into glucose and released in the bloodstream, which causes our blood sugar to rise. In response to this rise in blood sugar, your pancreas releases insulin, which shuttles the sugar out of the blood and to your cells to be used for energy. And as the excess sugar leaves your blood, your blood sugar levels return back to baseline. Your body always wants to maintain homeostasis and keep your blood sugar at this baseline. When your blood sugar is too high, this can lead to problems. And same goes for when it is too low. Right in the middle at about four grams is the sweet spot. Measuring your blood sugar is easy. All you need is a small device called the blood glucose monitor, which you can buy at pharmacies or online from companies such as Keto Mojo. You prick your finger with a small needle to draw blood and put the blood on a sensor strip. And within a couple of seconds, you'll have a current reading of the amount of sugar that's in your blood. Glycemic variability. Glycemic variability refers to the changes in blood sugar that happen over a period of time. Someone with high glycemic variability will see a wide variance in their blood sugar levels throughout the day. There will be large swings up and down in their blood glucose after eating, for example and someone with low glycemic variability will have very little variance in their blood sugar throughout the day. Their line will be more or less flat. Now here's the thing, the body is very resilient and it can handle these large influxes in blood sugar when they happen. However, if you are having these large spikes and dips constantly throughout the day, day after day, this is when it can lead to problems. Doing this will cause your cells to become less sensitive to insulin. And remember that insulin is the hormone that transports excess sugar from your bloodstream and into your cells. So when your cells start resisting insulin, they're not taking in blood sugar as they should. Your muscle cells are the first to become resistant to insulin, meaning that excess glucose is now more likely to be stored as fat. And this is, of course, a side effect of insulin resistance that people are absolutely not thrilled about. And on top of that, insulin resistance will eventually lead to high fasting blood sugar and a type 2 diabetes diagnosis. It can also manifest as other diseases, such as PCOS and heart disease. Furthermore, there's a lot of evidence that people with high glycemic variability are at a greater risk of hypoglycemia, which is when your blood sugar drops too low. 
I did a whole video on hypoglycemia. If you guys are curious, maybe you experience it and you want to know more about how it is related to glycemic variability and insulin resistance, I will link that video up above. But basically, the lower our glycemic variability, the more stable we can keep our blood sugar throughout the day, the better. Not only for the prevention of diseases, which I just discussed, but for short-term benefits as well. With stable blood sugar and low glycemic variability, your energy will be steady throughout the day. You won't have energy crashes mid-morning or mid-afternoon where you lose focus and are craving a snack. You will be able to think clearer and have less brain fog. You will sleep better and your hormones will remain in balance. And these are just a few of the short-term benefits you might experience. Anyways, enough chit-chat, let's get into the list. Protein sources. Quality protein sources that do not contain carbohydrates are very blood sugar friendly. These include anchovies, bass, beef, bison, cod, chicken, crab, deer, duck, herring, kangaroo. Yes, I live in Australia and yes, we eat kangaroo. <laughs> Lamb, lobster, mackerel, oysters, salmon, sardines, shrimp, trout, tuna, turkey, pork, and rabbit. Now, in terms of vegetarian protein sources, I will give a couple examples of these as well. But for those of you who have been around my channel for a while, I'm sure you're aware I am a big advocate for quality animal protein. The main reason is blood sugar control. Plant protein sources come with more carbohydrates, which impact our blood sugar, and also less protein per calorie, so you are getting less bang for your buck. From a nutrition standpoint, animal protein is superior hands down, but I do understand that some people have their reasons for wanting to limit or exclude animal products from their diet. So here are some top picks of vegetarian protein sources that won't spike your blood sugar. Almonds, Brazil nuts, various cheeses such as cottage cheese, cheddar, mozzarella, Swiss, and Parmesan. Eggs, hazelnuts, hemp seeds, macadamia nuts, walnuts, and full fat yogurt. Beans and legumes can potentially be all right as well, but I say that hesitantly because they come with a laundry list of other side effects. The least of which being gas, and the worst of which being autoimmune symptoms. Vegetables. In terms of vegetables, anything that is low sugar and non-starchy is going to be low glycemic and blood sugar friendly. Artichoke, asparagus, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, butternut squash, cabbage, cauliflower, celery, cucumber, eggplant, garlic, green bell pepper, lettuce, mushrooms, onions, pickles, spaghetti squash, and zucchini. Fruit. When it comes to fruit, you mainly want to stay away from tropical fruit, which are very high in sugar and spike blood sugar significantly. Good ones to include are avocado, blackberries, blueberries, coconut, olives, kiwi, lemons, limes, raspberries, peaches, strawberries, and tomatoes. Fats and oils. And let's finish off with some healthy fats and oils. Now, technically, anything that is mainly fat is going to be very blood sugar friendly. However, some types of fat are definitely healthier than others. When it comes to cooking oils and fats, those that are solid at room temperature are best as they are able to withstand the most heat. And if you weren't expecting me to say that and that caught you totally off guard, check out this video after about good and bad fats why there is a misconception that saturated fat is unhealthy, and why oils like vegetable oil are worse for your health. For today's purposes, I will just say the vegetable oils, which include canola, soybean, grapeseed, corn, and safflower, anything that's high in polyunsaturated fat and comes from a seed basically, these actually contribute to insulin resistance and should be avoided as much as possible. Healthy fats and oils that you should include are avocado oil, baking grease, beef tallow, butter, chicken fat, coconut oil, cod liver oil, duck fat, flaxseed oil, ghee, MCT oil, and olive oil. Anyways guys, that's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comment section down below which of these blood sugar friendly foods is your favorite. Maybe also let me know which one is your least favorite, just for fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
If you do leave a comment, I super appreciate it. Comments really help to support my channel. Of course, giving this video a thumbs up also helps. And of course, clicking that subscribe button if you're not already, which you definitely should be subscribed. I don't know why you haven't clicked that subscribe button yet. <laughs> No pressure though, no pressure. Yeah, all of that supports my channel, so if you have time to comment, thank you. Even just say hi. <laughs> I try to respond to all comments and questions that are posted within the first hour or so, as much as possible. So I'll talk to you some more down there. And if you guys did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on how to lower blood sugar fast, which you can check out here. If you want to catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you want to check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.